Welcome to BizTech's C-Suite Conversation Show, the show where we feature companies operating globally, talking about their solutions and how they make a difference to their customers' businesses. Now, today we speak to Sunil Kanchi, the Chief Information Officer and Chief Investment Officer at UST. UST is a global digital transformation solution provider headquartered in California. Now, Sunil, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me. Now, Sunil, to kick things off, tell us about UST and the company's history. Brian, UST started in 1999, and we've been in business for the last 22 years. And we started with a very simple but powerful dream of transforming lives and transforming the lives of our customers and our customers' customers using technology. We also make sure that we are transforming the lives of our employees. And that way we are transforming. And our goal is to transform 3 billion lives on this planet by the end of 2023. So we've been in the technology space for the last 22 years, and we've been transforming one life at a time, one customer at a time. Today, we are at a place where in the US, about a third of the, uh, the country's population is supported in their healthcare services through UST's technology, through the payer and provider systems and the softwares that we make for these companies. Across the globe, we are a leader in the retail space by providing and helping retailers innovate and, and, and making sure that their customers are enjoying their lives and making their lives better. At least more than half of the world's top retailers are supported by UST. So we've been a major technology player across the globe for the last 22 years. Now, Sunil, so obviously healthcare is an area that you're very strong at, also retail, but what does your Asia Pacific footprint look like and what key industries do you focus on in, in the region? Our, uh, uh, we operate in 30 countries globally and we have 30,000 of our employees in these 30, operating out of these 30 countries, but more than half of these are based in uh, Asia, uh, specifically in India, about 8,000 of our employees are based in India. Uh, 2,000 are in Malaysia, 2,500 and close to 2,500 of our employees are in Malaysia, which is actually our second largest delivery center in Asia Pacific. And we are in uh, Singapore, in, uh, in Australia, in New Zealand. Uh, we are expanding into other Asia Pacific countries. From a market perspective, we also uh, have a major joint venture that we, develop, that we have with Temasek out of Singapore that is going to be focusing even more on the uh, Singapore and the ASEAN and the Asia Pacific cu customers. Now, uh, you, you mentioned Malaysia, you opened that lab in 2020 uh, and, and you mentioned that it's 2000 strong, which is a very large number. What does that do specifically and which markets does it serve? We started our uh, operations in Malaysia in Penang uh, in 2020, like you said. And we started based on a request from one of our top customers in the semiconductor vertical. And since then, we've grown with them specifically for that one customer doing engineering and engineering support lab. And now we've expanded to even provide a significant amount of innovative services, partnering with this customer to create new solutions, new digital solutions for the Asia Pacific market. In addition to that, we have then uh, once we grew it to a critical mass, we've then taken on and moved many of our customer delivery, not just for the semiconductor vertical, but for other, uh, other areas. We provide health tech, uh, retail, manufacturing, supply chain, all kinds of IT services, IT enabled services out of Penang in Malaysia. Now, you know, the last two years have been amazing in terms of digital transformation, uh, across the globe, obviously forced upon by COVID. Uh, so we've had 10 to 15 years of, of transformation basically compressed in two years. Could you give us some examples of how you've helped companies in their digital transformation in the last two years? Absolutely, Brian. I think this is a, a well-known fact. I, I myself have written an article that was published in the London Times about uh, how COVID has played the chief digital transformation officer across the globe, not just for technology companies, but for every company, right? 
every company needed to innovate, needed to become more digital, move things to the cloud, make sure that their employees are able to uh, work from anywhere, not just work from home. A lot of the employees started to travel and uh, work out of their extended family homes, work out of vacation homes, move to different places. So that was the first thing that most companies were looking to do is to make sure that they're able to bring their operations online as quickly as possible. Technology was their only friend at that time because unfortunately many of the uh, people-centric, people-facing businesses suffered quite a bit, but we and most of our technology partners and, and, and competitors worked diligently to make sure that every industry was being able, was, was transformed to its best ability. So the first and foremost is being able to get employees to be able to work from anywhere. Second is to be able to make sure that the customers are able to access the services of these companies digitally from the, from the safety of their homes. So from that perspective, making sure many of the companies just needed a simple mobile front end, or maybe a, a, a customer contact center, or a web system that enabled them to perform more of their services. So a myriad of services that were, pro, that, were uh, that all enable the customers to serve our customers, the, the, bread and, uh, the brick and mortar companies and the technology companies to serve their end customers from the safety of their homes. So we've been at the forefront of it, whether it is uh, digitizing and providing a mobile front end or a mobile tool or a mobile application to moving core systems onto the cloud from on-premise. That way these solutions are all up and running and to be able to even transform significantly supply chain systems, for example, which have been under significant pressure over the last couple of years, accentuated by the whole COVID challenges. That's also another area that has gone through a significant amount of transformation. And UST has been at the forefront of these services, whether it is in the health tech space by providing uh, telemedicine kind of solutions. We have a platform called as MyDoc, uh, that we are a partner in that's based out of Singapore and serving countries in the region, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia. So we've invested significantly into making tools like that available to end customers, as well as uh, to uh, the, the, the general population, as well as enabling our customers to be able to provide those technology solutions. You know, Sunil, in the, the start of the interview, you talked about change and changing people's lives one at a time, one customer at a time, one person at a time. Could you perhaps share with us in this trans digital transformation journey, and you've, you've, you have a lens for a across the globe, what digital transformation for any specific company really stood out for you in terms of the impact that it's made on, on either their customers' lives or their patients or their, or, or, or their employees' lives? Um, I can give you a, a few different examples. Um, uh, one of the world's, um, or uh, the la one of the largest insurance payers in the country was able to create a platform that allowed their end customers to access COVID, uh, um, uh, COVID solutions or solutions to make sure their uh, life and health was taken care of. Um, we helped with um, making sure those systems were up and running within a span of a few days. Um, so, and uh, that was just one example. Another is uh, helping a very large telco company to be able to provide a mobile solution to be able to address all its employees on where they are based and making sure that their employees are safe. We provide our solutions for our own employees. We have 30,000 employees across the globe. And we came up with a solution called UNUST, which is a mobile app that uh, had a lot of solutions, but we added features specifically for the COVID challenges and how to take care of those. So, uh, uh, and that particular product or that particular solution was awarded the best digital solution by the Confederation of Indian Industry, by Microsoft and CNBC. So we've got a lot of awards uh, uh, for the kind of solutions that we've created for our customers as well as for ourselves internally. Okay, Sunil, I'm gonna wear the hat of a CIO now and I'm evaluating vendors to partner with us and I, I'm a large company. Why should I partner with UST? What is your secret sauce? And tell us about your innovation ecosystem and how you make a difference. Absolutely, Brian. 
I would start with the single biggest differentiator being our people. Our associates, all 30,000 of them and growing, are so passionate about taking care of their customers. They put their customers and, and the projects that they're working on first. And that is a huge differentiator. It's not me telling you about it. It's something that we've heard from our customers constantly for the last 20 years. We never even had a sales team, a news business sales team. It's our customers word of mouth and going back to other customers or when customer CXOs moved from one company to another company, they would come back and say, hey, come back and help us. So our people and making and the, and the passion at which they provide the solutions and putting the customer first has been a major differentiator and that's what our customers are telling us. The second is in terms of the motto itself on how UST looks at doing business. We have been a select uh, customers more attention. That's the tagline and that's the model we've used for the last 20 plus years. We only have for the size of UST, we only have 140 customers. Each of these customers, we want to be broad and deep in being able to provide solutions for them. We start off in the custom application development. So we are, custom, we are a, a, a company that understands our customer solutions and customer's business and processes so, deep, so deeply that they keep bringing us back uh, to helping them with, uh, with uh, providing more and more act and, uh, services for them. And the third is how we do business in terms of, we know we can't be everything for our customers. We need an ecosystem. And this ecosystem is something that has been uh, phenomenally uh, uh, welcomed by the industry. And uh, Professor Ram Charan, uh, the Harvard uh, business uh, professor and a management guru, has actually written about it in one of his books, uh, which actually talks about, um, that's this book, Competitive Advantage and uh, Rethinking Competitive Advantage. In that book, he talks about the ecosystem that UST created of multiple players to make sure that the customer wins always. Uh, what are these players, right? It's the it's UST as a company. We work with a, lar a large set of other technology providers like the Microsofts, the Oracles, the SAPs of the world. And then we also work with a significantly large number of smaller companies, especially innovative companies. We've put together a phenomenal ecosystem of over 300 companies across geographies like a Far East Asia, including Singapore, Israel, India, the Bay Area, London. We've looked at every innovative hub that's out there and across to find new innovative companies, bringing innovative solutions to the market. And we also partner with uh, startup funds, venture capitals, and also universities. Why startup funds? Because they are always investing and looking for help. And we are a technology partner for many of these startup companies. At the same time, we partner with some of the top uh, uh, technology schools, whether it is the computer science department at Stanford or the MIT Innovation Lab uh, or um, uh, across multiple other geographies. We work with some of the top universities to make sure we are learning about the cutting edge technology and bringing those technologies back into our business solutions that we can bundle and give our end customers. So that's an ecosystem that we've put together that's been well recorded in Professor Ramcharan's book as well. You know, Sunil, so, so that is really impressive. And, and I can tell you one thing that's just stuck in my mind, the fact that you only have 140 plus customers. For a company of your size, that is incredible. But, and also because of the performance that you've had in 2018, in June, Tamasic Singapore Sovereign Wealth Fund invested 250 million in USD at that time, which that tipped you over in terms of unicorn valuation. How has that impacted the company? Major, major. That UST is a privately held company even today. Uh, we're part of the Comcraft family of investments, and we are one of their largest investments, and we've been so for the last 22 years. So for the first time, uh, we took external investment was with uh, Temasek, and that's public news. And we've taken that money and using it to make further investments. And uh, some of that majority of that money is going towards our um, mergers and acquisition strategy and for further inorganic growth. Uh, until then, actually, UST, I know uh, prior to this uh, recording, we started talking about UST being an acquisitive company. 
In reality, we are not an acquisitive company. Prior to 2018, we were a majority organic growth company, except for 2014, we made three acquisitions. After that, we never made any other acquisitions until we got this infusion of funds and brought in Temasek as a partner for us. So two major things, we love the Temasek partnership. It brings in a significant value, not just from the money that was invested, but from the ecosystem and the network that Temasek provides. The leadership uh, that's on our board and advisors is phenomenal uh, leaders and thought leaders that are part of our ecosystem and part of our board and advisory right now. And then the philosophy is the culture matches. It is a long-term play. It's not looking to make a quick investment, turn it around and sell it for a bigger piece. Yes, financial, uh, financial um, uh, ROI is extremely critical, but it's the marriage of two companies that we believe that, uh, that have a significant cultural alignment and business alignment in terms of how we want to look forward. So with that, we get a significant network and ecosystem and that investment is what then translated into the joint venture of Temis. Temasek plus USD is a joint venture that came in. It's a phenomenal advantage for us. We love that partnership and we're using majority of those funds towards acquisitions now. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about that joint venture. What are the key objectives for that? So the joint venture of Temis was created primarily to focus on the Singapore and the ASEAN region, the uh, Asia Pacific market around uh, Singapore. Uh, so some of these geographies will be served through our Temis arm going forward. So we are the, the, the technology provider, we are the people provider, we bring in a lot of that experience and then Temisek, uh, uh, and Temis would go after the some of the uh, Temisek portfolio companies as well as uh, providing major transformation in that geography from uh, supporting Singapore government and the governments in that region, Malaysia, Indonesia, all of those regions, we are hoping to provide significant support to these governments and that region and the customers in that region from a digital transformation play. And that sounds really exciting because one of the things that I see is then your, your, your customer portfolio via that joint venture will probably grow at a far more rapid rate because you're building in this region. So you, you have to sort of expand your footprints as such, whereas your strategy in the past has been, been building deeper and deeper relationships. That is true. It opens up a complete new geography for us and we, we, we hope to accelerate our sales and serving our customers in that region at a much, much more faster pace. Now, so looking ahead, how is digital transformation going to look like in a post-COVID world? We're now, lots of markets are opening up. We're getting back to business as usual somewhat. Of course, hybrid workspaces and stuff will prevail for a while. But what's your vision of what the digital landscape is going to look like? That's a very interesting question, Brian. And we are always searching for the answer. And if I had uh, a magic uh, mirror or lens to be able to find the exact solutions, uh, it would be wonderful. But it's not just about looking forward, but also looking on the uh, uh, what's behind the curve that's might, that, that might come. Nobody expected in, uh, in January of 2020 or maybe late 2019 that we would be hit with something like COVID. And during the first quarter of COVID, like the first, second quarter of 2020, nobody expected that COVID would actually be an accelerator and a transformative positive catalyst towards growing the digital services, right? Uh, because uh, as we spoke about the first quarter and the second quarter, we were all wondering and uh, worrying about how this might affect us globally and businesses might have to shut down or significantly turn down. But from a digital and IT services perspective, it really accelerated and took us to the next level. So going forward, the way we look at it, and I also want to say, I don't know if you're fully out of COVID and I hope so too. Uh, I, I want to be up <laughs> in terms of being able to get out and enjoy life as uh, from pre-COVID or in the post-COVID world. So I'm always looking forward to that. But there's a lot of transformation that we are looking forward to. You said uh, hybrid workspaces. That's, I think, one of the simplest things that we are all having, we have all gotten used to in many ways in the last two years. But I think there's a lot of other things that we are starting to look at. For example, uh, right now, 
uh, there's a lot of new uh, terminology that you're hearing about uh, Web 3.0 and about the meta, all right, the metaverse and uh, technologies like that, and how we believe that's going to be transforming a lot of the services and how companies interact with their end customers. So that's one set of uh, technologies that we believe will be significantly changing the customer interaction or the company to customer interaction. Another set of technologies is the uh, the whole challenge with cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Yes, it's been there, but there's a lot of government regulation that will probably come in. And uh, we are trying to figure out how to stay ahead of that curve and make the right investments, especially in the banking and financial services and insurance tech space. And in terms of uh, certain countries using cryptocurrencies for uh, uh, as their as their uh, um, as their government sponsored currency and so on. So it's a lot of regulation that's coming in in the business world. Uh, the third is in terms of the most important one that I always say that we have to be looking for at is the whole cybersecurity space, right? And that's something that uh, it is not going away. It's going to become more and more complicated going forward. Uh, more and more investments need to be made in the cybersecurity space. So uh, we are going to be making a lot more investments. We already have a division, a wholly owned division called Cyberproof that we're providing, including in Singapore um, and Malaysia. We provide a lot of those services to our customers across the globe, uh, and it is based out of uh, Israel. So we are looking at uh, some of these major transformative investments uh, that will that will uh, help us uh, take uh, take our customers to the next level, making sure that they can do business in a safe environment going forward as well. Now, Sunil, I, I, I wanna zoom in on you right now uh, because you're a corporate guy, obviously, but you're also an entrepreneur and an angel investor. Now you founded Kanchi Technologies, uh, which you sold to UST in 2014, I believe, and uh, as part of two, three acquisitions that UST made in 2014. Could you share with us some of the management lessons that you learned as an entrepreneur who has built and then successfully sold his business in less than five years? Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, it's, it's always uh, my soft spot. <laughs> I, I enjoyed being the entrepreneur. I think I learned more in those five years, uh, four and a half years. So it's actually four and a half years uh, from date of, and it's eight years since I actually sold the company to UST and being part of UST now. Uh, so I've enjoyed that stint and I learned a lot. Um, and we learn a lot about these things through our uh, through books, through the MBA program that I went to at Kellogg School of Business in Chicago. So uh, you learn a lot about it, but until you actually uh, go through it and face it on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't realize how important it is. Uh, people talk about cash is king, uh, making sure your cash flow, you learn about it, but there is no harder lesson that you will learn as an entrepreneur <laughs> in being able to manage your cash flow, right? Uh, but having said that, the biggest lesson to me is about taking care of your customers and taking care of your employees. Um, taking care of your customers and understanding their pain points, understanding what they need uh, uh, from, the, from the real solution, their pain points, and being able to come up with solutions and if you can do that successfully, they're not going to let you go. I started off with just myself and we grew from just being me to about 380 employees or a very, very short span, a couple of years. And um, it was only because we were able to understand the customer's pain, pain points and being able to come up with solutions for that and making sure that I'm taking care of the employees and our associates um, that we are taking care of the, the people side of it, right? So that they can then take care of the customers. So that's a second uh, lesson is being able to uh, understand the customers and taking care of the customers and being able to provide the solutions. And third is always, always about people taking care of the people and employees and making sure that they are taken care of, they will take care of you again. A um, lot more lessons, but these would be my top three. Then Sunil, then what would you have done differently? I, I was actually talking about that uh, just recently to one of my cousins uh, as he's building his uh, company and focusing on the core of the business, 
Uh, in 2012, uh, we were so successful between 2009 and 2010, 11 and 12, that uh, we were so successful that I started to diversify from the core uh, and start to focus on looking at maybe buying an office space and diversifying too quickly into new geographies. Those were two mistakes that I made that I wouldn't make uh, again. Um, focus on the core, especially when you're small, when you're an entrepreneur, you gotta stay focused in making sure you're taking care of your customers. But I, when I sold it, it was not because I wanted to sell it. It was just an opportunity, too many, uh, too many, too many positive uh, reach outs in terms of uh, acquiring me came out. And I thought it was a good opportunity to be a part of a bigger platform. And from a cultural fit perspective, USD was such a mind melt. We have the same thoughts and same ideals in terms of the culture, taking care of people, taking care of customers, all of that, that I, I decided would be good for me to accelerate or what we start off at Kanchi Technologies going forward into UST. So we've, we've grown the engineering services business into a much, much larger uh, piece uh, today. And, and Sunil, so that was my next question as well. Uh, you do a lot of m as because that's your responsibility uh, at UST. And using your lessons in terms of being acquired all those years ago, um, is obviously culture and cultural fit is a very important part of a successful merger or acquisition. What are the other key drivers that you look out for in terms of your potential acquisitions? You're right, Brian. I keep telling every company owner that I meet, the founders, I say, hey, you're a great company. You built it. You're successful, and that's why you're even uh, you're you're thriving today. And that's why we are looking at acquiring you. And that cultural fit is many a times a make or break. Despite all the other, um, we can we have to start with the financial uh, financials. That's the single uh, largest uh, or the single most important criteria in terms of how uh, the financials would play out and the ROI would be there. But the key, the, the key uh, thread is being able to uh, make sure that it fits strategically into who we are and where we want to go in the journey over the next few years. So that strategic fit is an, a, a second important, another important criteria. A third is in terms of the people, uh, the kind of people the, uh, that are there. Uh, that are uh, starting with the founders, the CEO, the, the founders of the company and the culture that they built and the kind of um, uh, uh, management that they uh, uh, have in the company. And also the key leadership and the people that are part of the delivery and everything. So that's just another large, uh, very important criteria. Uh, the next is in terms of why they would want to sell. Are they just looking to cash out? Are they looking for a longer term play? Because at the end of the day, this IT services business is all about growing and all about people and having good people to come in and join with us. So we are looking for strong leaders to come in with these acquisitions to help us grow uh, and grow more, grow further. Now, Sunil, it's been a fascinating conversation. I really learned a lot, but before we leave, any final thoughts you'd like to share with us? No, thank you very much, Brian, for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, UST is a phenomenal, innovative company. We are here to provide our customers the best that we can, and we are always innovating for our customers and transforming one life at a time. So thank you very much, Brian, for having me. Now, thank you for taking the time to be on the show, Sunil. Absolutely, my pleasure. I'm Brian Fernandez, and we've been speaking to Sunil Kanchi, the Chief Information Officer and Chief Investment Officer at UST on Bistex C-Suite Conversation Show. This video and podcast will be on our website, www.bistex.asia, as well as our social media platforms. Please subscribe and like our various platforms. Thanks for tuning in.